Hey, welcome back to the Six Figure Mastermind. Marianne Denavla is here with you today. We're gonna to talk about how to improve the parent-child relationship. I've got five kids of my own. Learn from my mistakes and learn the tips that I generated from those mistakes, guys. Keep watching. Maybe you're a parent like me and maybe you're even a mom like me. And if you're a mom like me, you know how important it is to establish a really good relationship with your kids. You are the front lines for these kids. Everything they experience throughout the duration of their lives is going to be influenced by your relationship with them. Like it or not, they're going to see the world through the lens that you provide and you want to give something that's really going to be helpful for them and give them the best shot and the most fantastic life possible. So let me share with you the tools that I use to build a great relationship with my kids. The first thing I do when I'm building my schedule, building my business, is I schedule time for each child during a specific night of the week. The kids look forward to this time. They know it's their one-on-one -on -one time between them and mom. And this is something that they look forward to on a weekly basis. So the oldest kid will get Monday night, the second kid will get Tuesday night, the third kid will get Wednesday night, and so on. Each one of those children knows that that's one-on-one -on -one time with mom. We spend it time coloring, we'll spend time going on walks, we'll spend time maybe watching their favorite show together. It doesn't really matter. They get to pick generally what that is, and sometimes we'll surprise them with something super fun. But that time is something they look forward to and they can rely on for me to be present for. It's a great idea. I suggest you implement it into your family, into your dynamic. Schedule that one-on-one -on -one time so that they know when and what to expect. When you're building a relationship with your kids, we don't often give them enough credit for knowing their own ways of feeling loved. We don't often give them enough credit for knowing what's best for them because like we like to play that parent card, right? I know it's best for you because I'm your parent. Well, maybe sometimes, but maybe not all the time. So let your child express to you how they feel loved. One of my favorite things to do with each one of my kids every single day is to look them straight in the eye and say, how can I best show love for you today? How can I best express my love for you today? And you know what you get every time as a guaranteed response if you do that? If you get a response from your child that says, I would love to bake cookies with you, then when you bake cookies with you, that child will feel loved. It's because that they expressed it and you fulfilled it. They know what their love languages are. And if, guess what? Sometimes you're gonna get an I don't know. Sometimes that happens. And I like to combat that with a couple phrases. First phrase I say, if you do know, or if you did know, what would it be? Okay. Another one I like to combat it with is, well, you know what? I would like to help you make your bed and that's why I'm gonna show you my love for you today. Or one of a myriad of any other things that you could do to help your child to serve your child. You wanna know your child's personality type. So read a couple books called The Five Love Languages for Kids and The Child Whisperer. The couple books I highly recommend. So you can get to know your child and how they would feel loved, either by service or gifts or words of affirmation or whatever it is that you find out really fits their personality. Get to know them and get to know them behind the scenes so that when that time comes, because it will, I promise you, when that time comes where they become closed off or non-responsive for a moment and they're introverted, that you know them well enough to just slip a little invitation through the cracks and say, hey, I'm here for you. Open communication is so important. As a working mom, I have to work at home and sometimes that requires me to be quote unquote on the clock. But my kids and I have a system so that they know they can communicate with me at any given moment. If I happen to be on a call with a client or in a meeting, they know that they can write me a note and either stick it to the door or slip it under the door so that I am available to them if anything comes up that they need. Open communication starts very, very young. Open communication means holding eye contact. It means dropping what you're doing when you can, okay? And we can, you can more often than you think you can, all right? It also means reflecting back to them words that they use and emotions that they use so that they know you're listening to them. Even if the words don't make sense to you, reflect it back to them and let them know that you understand where they're coming from, even if it feels like you don't. That leads me to my next tip is establishing trust. The bedrock of trust in the relationship is exactly that. 
Everything is built upon the trust of a relationship, the child trusting you and you trusting the child. Sometimes that means that you have to extend a little bit more trust and then verify. That's how trust is built. It's called trust and verify. You extend the trust and then verify that it happened. For example, if your child wants to go to a friend's house, you say, great, you can go, but you need to call me when you get there. That is a verification. Yes, you can go. I want you to call me. We're going to verify that you're there. That builds trust. And it can go both ways. I'm going to verify for you that I'm going to pick you up after school by sending you a text when I'm on my way. Okay? This system of trust and verification is what builds the bedrock for when something rough happens, because I guarantee you it will. Your kids are going to experience hard times. Your child spends half of their time with you before they're five years old. The rest of the time is either spent at school or with their friends. Half of the hours of their life before they're 18 that they spend with you happen before they're five. So this is when it's really, really pivotal to establish that open form of communication and that bedrock of trust. The last thing I want to share with you is teaching by example and especially when you make mistakes. You're a parent. You're going to make mistakes. You're still the perfect parent for your child, but you're going to make mistakes. It's, it will happen. The biggest connection I felt with my parents and the biggest connection I feel with my kids is when the authority figure owns up to mistakes that they've made. The biggest example you can be is how to repair mistakes when they go wrong. Perfection, it, does, it doesn't happen, guys. We don't have 100% perfection all the time. We're not designed to. When this whole dynamic isn't designed to be perfect, but it's designed to be complete. And when you can be a perfect parent and sharing the what you do to fix your mistakes, perhaps in my book, that's the best example you can be to your kids to make it right as fast as you can. So establish the trust, build the communication, ask them how they want to be loved and fix it when the time comes that it needs to be fixed. Hey, thanks for watching today's video. I hope you have an amazing time with your kids today. Do something really, really special with them and leave me a comment. Let me know what it was. Hit the subscribe button. I'll see you later. Bye.